Ugh. This is legitimately the hardest part of this job. We're in the light. Okay, you're good. I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. I know there's an accent in there somewhere. In case it's not wrong, let's run it. Hey, I'm Taylor with Brothers on the Side. Today we got called out to this customer's house to install the new Aqua V1 Plus House Hydra. What we're doing is we're ripping out their old gate style hose bib because there's no way to winterize it. If you don't have a freeze resistant hydrant on the side of the house, what can happen is there's water left in the lines. If it freezes, the water is going to expand inside the pipes, burst your pipes, and then you're going to have a leak on your hands. It's going to flood this garage and that's not what we want to happen. So we're going to get rid of this old hose bib, put in the new Aqua V1 Plus house hydrant. It is so easy to winterize. It's easy to install and I'm gonna cut down the install time with Sharp Bite products. This is gonna be the easiest job I do today. It's gonna to take me about an hour. We're gonna do most of our work from the other side. So let's get started. So one other thing, make sure you check your local ordinance before any install. So let's get started. So we took our measurements outside. So to get ready, I've gotta figure out where my hose bib is. So taking into account the elevation change between the ground outside and the garage, here's our hose bib. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark out, I'm gonna cut my hole as straight as possible. And what we're gonna do is go back with an access panel. That way, if we ever need to work on this again, we can get in there without destroying drywall. It's quick, it's easy, it's efficient. So let's get started. All right, so it looks like we have PEX piping down to this little bit of copper, which works great for me because I'm going back with Sharp Bite today. So I'm putting in their own isolation valve. That's gonna make it easy. Real quick, real simple push connect. And then I've gotta go back with my male adapter here because what we're doing with Aqua today is we're using this threaded 90. So what's good about our threaded 90 is it's gonna take our two inch house hydrant here and knock off a half inch of it. So it's actually gonna fit in the residential wall. Speaking of our house hydrant, I love this thing. So it comes with a diagram so I can lay out where I need to cut. It has a cover plate, which can match the trim of the house. This customer's going with matte black, but we have plenty of options. But the absolute best thing about this house hydrant is this is what sticks out of the house. This is winterized and ready to go. All I've gotta do when I'm ready to get water out of it is take my adapter, push it straight in and twist it into place. I'm ready for water, I'm ready for winter. It could not be simpler. I love this thing, let's get started. So before I get this water turned off, what I always like to do is check the pressure on the house. And this one's leaking. So yeah, they needed a new hose bib. <laughs> but from what I can read, it's reading about 48, probably 50 to 55, if I was getting the full pressure from the hose bib. It means our PRV is doing great and we're ready to go. Let's kill the water and get started. Okay, so typically your water shut off is in the house. It's also outside. We're shutting the one off at the street because I have easier access to the hose bib because the house is within walking distance of the shut off. And I don't wanna have to come from their basement near their water heater to come all the way back up here and check my work. So it's just easier for me to kill it out here. Let's get our system drained. All right, so after looking at the hole, it's not gonna be big enough. So we're gonna go a little wider, go back with a slightly bigger access panel. Now I can see the pipe that I need access to. We can put our ball valve in place and the customer's gonna be able to get to it when they need to. All right, so I don't know how much water is gonna come out of this pipe when I cut it. We've drained the system, but that does not mean there's no water sitting in the line. So all I'm doing is cutting myself a funnel. That way I can keep water from getting trapped behind the drywall and funnel it down here into my bucket. Impromptu when I don't have a funnel handy in my pocket. And we're ready to go. Before I cut anything, we need to decide where we're gonna put the ball valve so our customer has a shut off for this hose bib. I need it to fit with enough room that it has access behind the access panel and also in between my new threaded 90 that's gonna come off of our new system into the ball valve. So we're gonna get an eyeball for that now, and then we'll get all of our good measuring as it goes in. 
we're gonna be here. All right, it's gonna leave me more than enough space. So let's go ahead and get that marked. So just a rough mark to the bottom of our makeup there. And then I've gotta make sure before I actually install my ball valve that I go back with my deburring tool, make sure there's no rough edges that can cut the O-rings in this. And I also need to double check the depth of insertion on this. So with the Sharp Bite Max, with a half inch fitting, it's actually one inch insertion depth. So go on to Sharp Bite's website, double check that for yourself, but always make sure you're going to the correct depth. You make a mark so you make sure this is inserted all the way, or it's not gonna work as it's designed to. Let's get this cut, let's get started. All right, so our pipe's cut and we're ready to start the install. Before I go outside and actually uninstall this old hose bib, what I wanna do is go through some of the steps that I'm gonna have to do to get ready before I actually go in and put the new one in. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna have to tape and dope my male adapter here. So I'm gonna use my male adapter from Sharp Butt here into my threaded 90 for the house hydrant system. I'm using this for two reasons. Number one, the pipe comes from up top, I gotta to get to it somehow. And number two, it's actually going to shorten the stem by a half inch to accommodate a residential wall. So I don't have to worry about it being too bulky and sticking out into the garage. We can keep this nice and tucked away behind our access panel and not create an eyesore for our customer. All right, now that that's prepped, I take the house hydrant system and this straight piece actually unscrews. I've gotta be careful of the O-ring in here. It's pretty lubricated, so I don't need to mess with it. What I need to do is take my 90, screw it into place, and what I really like about this, it only needs to be hand tight. That's hand tight. It's nowhere near where I need it to be. But once I have it tightened, I get one full rotation backwards and it still maintains watertight from hand tight. So I can back it up keep the name on the front level so it looks nice for my customer. I get my pipe and my fitting in line where I want it so I can make my tie in, whether that's straight above it or all the way to the other side. It leaves me plenty of options. I can go all the way down or I can sit this right up top, right where I need it. I love that feature. Let's go outside, take off the old one. We'll get this new plate screwed on after I widen this hole. We'll come back in and finish the job. cut this excess pipe and get this out of the wall. All right, so now I have to widen the hole for the house hydrant. I'm gonna use this inch and a half hole saw bit and we're going slightly off to the left here to accommodate for the space. We're going right through here. There it is. So we need to make sure the Aquar is facing straight and level right where our customer wants it. So what I need to do is take this debris cover, slide it in behind it, and go ahead and rotate it in place to match my holes that I've marked, and now I can pre-drill. So what this is doing is holding it at a slight pitch so that every time I winterize, I don't have any water held in it. I use the polymer one here as my guide because this actually isn't the one we're installing. I wanna go back with my customer's choice of the matte black so it matches the accents that are on the outside of her house already. There's plenty of options. You can find one that's gonna match your house. So now that we've marked our holes and we know we're level, all I have to do is line this up with the holes that I've already pre-drilled, set three screws and drill them into place. It's too simple. That way if the customer ever changes her mind and decides she wants to go with stainless for whatever reason, she's three screws away from it. All right, that'll do it. Let's go connect it from the inside. So we've gone with two inch valve stem to make sure we fit inside this residential wall. Now they go from two inch all the way to 12 inch, but you can check aquawatersystems.com to find the correct valve stem that you may need because we went through wood into a residential wall. Now you may be going through CMU block, poured foundation, you may be in a crawl space. It doesn't really matter the application. They're gonna have a valve stem and a size that's gonna fit your needs. So now let's get to the rest of the installation. So I wanna make sure that I take my deburring tool, even though this is PEX, I wanna get in here and really get as much of this deburred as possible because I don't wanna hurt the O-ring inside of the sharp bite. Next step is I need to make sure that I'm marking the correct insertion depth, which on sharp bite max is one inch, as long as I'm using a half inch fitting. 
So now that I've marked my insertion depth, I'm gonna make sure my handle's facing the correct way so that I'm not turning it back into the stud. We'll get it on here. And I go all the way to my insertion depth so I know I'm gonna hold. So we're going back with a ball valve here because even though these are low maintenance, that doesn't mean no maintenance. So I wanna be sure if I ever have to get in here and work on this valve again, I've got a way to shut it off without killing water to the rest of the house. Now in saying that, what I like about Aquar, they offer a limited lifetime warranty. All I've got to do is make sure I register with them and if I ever have a problem, I give them a call and they help me out. So what I need to do now is I need to measure from my makeup to my makeup. So I'm going from my sharp bite ball valve straight down to my sharp bite male adapter. So it looks like we're at four and a half. All I'm going to do is measure that out. And what I've got to make sure is even though I've cut this and we're looking at new pipe, it's important to go back, deburb both sides and still mark our insertion depth. I'm going to do that absolutely every time. I'm not gonna skip a step because I wanna make sure this works and it works right the first time. I wanna mark my insertion depth to make sure that I'm all the way in and I'm not gonna have any leaks. So let's do the final install now. There we go. So one of the reasons I actually decided to go back with my sharp bite male adapter and my sharp bite ball valve is Simplicity. I don't want to fight the small area in between this stud bay with a crimper or an expansion tool. I don't want to have to cut more drywall out than I need. It would be virtually impossible with the wall that I have now. This keeps it simple and keeps me moving. Let's go test. I want to slowly fill this up until my water gets pressurized and then I go in and I check for leaks. Sounds like we're pressurized and ready to rock. Let's go see if we have any leaks, any drips, or anything wrong with the connection. And as you can see here, I got nothing dripping, nothing leaking. So what I'm gonna do now is turn on this ball valve and make sure my house hydrant has no leaks. We're good to go, we're on. Let me go show you outside. This actually isn't running any water, even though I've got nothing connected to it and the ball valve is wide open. Until I actually put the hose connector onto the house, I'm getting no water out of the system. Bone dry and ready to go. All right, so now I just need to get the Comfort Grip hose connector attached to the hydrant itself. So to do that, all I've got to do is hold it at roughly two o'clock, but I need to make sure I take this arrow here and get it in line with this top groove. And it's just a quarter turn down into place. And I have water. It's always important to release the pressure before you go to take this hose connector back out or you're gonna get wet. When I'm ready to store this for the winter, and now we're winterized, so I'm gonna take this inside and put it somewhere that it doesn't get messed up. All right, let's slap this thing in and get out of here. That is nifty. So that'll do it for me today. We tore out an old gate style hose bib and replaced it with Aquar's brand new house hydrant. This thing was a dream to install and because I use sharp bite fittings, it only took me about an hour. So I'm ready to go to the next job. For direct links for products used in today's video, check the description below and I'll see you on the next one.